Hello traders, today I'm going to spend the entire video on market analysis, specifically how to trade the S&P 500 using price patterns and using the 1LP indicator, even if you are not an option stock or subscriber and you don't have access to the 1LP indicator, a lot of the technical patterns that I'm going to be showing you will still be of use to you. But the 1LP indicator is the only thing that I use for my S&P 500 trading. It's what governs all of the trading that I do intraday because I often don't trade the S&P 500. I find a much greater edge in trading individual stocks with relative strength and relative weakness. But of course, you already know that from my videos. But I haven't dedicated one single video to just market analysis and just the 1OP indicator. So let me start by talking about context. Context is super important because you have to see how the current price pattern that we're looking at fits into what's elapsed so far for the day and how that fits into the longer term picture. So I always like to look at the S&P 500 on a longer term basis. Now you can see here that we've had a series of market pullbacks and then a snapback rally. Pullback, snapback rally. Pullback, snapback rally. These pullbacks result in a new high and then the candles get very very tiny these tiny bodied candles tell you that the trend is not very strong also when you start grinding 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 higher on almost no volume the market has become vulnerable to these quick pullbacks so this is something as a trader that you need to be aware of when you're day trading you need to be able to look at a market like this and think to yourself, okay, tiny bodied candles, market is floating higher on light volume. I know that a pullback looms, but until I see a long red candle and sustained selling throughout the course of the day, I have to assume that the close is going to be fairly close to the opening price. And yes, there are tails above and below the body of the candle, so the market does have some range to it. But in general, when you get into very, very light volume conditions like this, you should be trimming your size. You should be trimming your trade count. This is a low probability market environment when you get into this type of situation, and you do not want to piss your capital away in a low probability market environment. Now, we can see that the market's had a full head of steam. There's a strong uptrend. And here we go. We get this nice dip in here. The dips have been shallow. They've been brief. They hardly even get going. And buyers are so anxious that, boom, we come right back. So if you're going to look at the chart and you're going to say, when do I want to step up to the plate? What would be that ideal situation? It would be here, 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 here. Why? Because the market is in a very strong uptrend and these pullbacks are giving us an opportunity to enter well. And once we have these pullbacks, we know that we get these long green candles. This is a bullish trend day where you can get in the trade and you can stick with the trade almost the entire day. And off of that low, you're going to get maybe two or three days like that that are just Fantastic. Then things kind of quiet down again. Here we got a couple of nice gaps higher that continue. So those are your sweet spots here, 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 here. And if I put the 50 day moving average up, you can see where they come into play very easily. Every time we've touched that 50 day moving average, we get those types of moves higher. So again, here you get that pullback and you get a reversal. That's a gap reversal. So you had a big gap down here on a daily chart. The entire day the market rallied and it closed almost on its high above that 50 day moving average. That tells you that this little dip right here probably has run its course. So when I come in the next day and I see a gap higher, I'm going to be expecting a gap and go formation. Here we go again, gap and go formation. But when we get to a new high and you get a gap off of a new high, there we start getting into some reversal, some gap reversal. So you do not want to be chasing at the upper end of the range. So now that we have our market bearings, I'm going to show you that here's the current price action. So we've had a little bit of selling, but right in here, you can see how the last two weeks 
have been really nothing. Tiny little bodied candles, horrible little volume coming in here as summer was winding down. So I'm not going to zoom back more than a week because there just wasn't any volume. But look, here we're starting to get some pretty decent trading volume. So let's go into a five minute chart and I'm going to start to describe the 1OP indicator first. Like most indicators, there's a fast line and a slow line. When the fast line crosses the slow line, that would trigger a signal. And the way that this indicator works is we wait for these troughs. And when you get a trough below the zero line, which is that black line, and you get the red line, the fast line, crossing above the blue line, then that is a buy signal. So let's recap that. You get the indicator below zero, and it's troughing and you get a cross of the red line above the blue line. That is a buy signal. Now you see how the indicator rallies, rally, rallies, and it crests right here. Now we have the red line below the blue dotted line. That is a sell signal up here. The one thing that you will notice is the 1OP indicator is predictive. It is anticipatory. It is early. That's what makes it so unique. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, this indicator is just some kind of derivative from every other indicator that's ever been out there and developed. Wrong. This took me 10 years to develop and to per, uh, perfect. It is optimized for the SPY on a five minute basis. As you'll see during the course of the video, it does not correlate with any other indicator that you're ever going to find. So rest assured, you're not going to find this anywhere else. And I'll show you how it works. I won't tell you how it's calculated, but I'll show you how to trade it and how it works. So in any event, you get a nice bullish cross here. Now you get a bearish cross here. So it's telling you right here, if you're long, you should be taking profits and watching for a technical breakdown. There's your technical breakdown, and there was your bearish cross, and now the market starts to come in. Now you get a bullish cross right in here. You got to wait for technical confirmation, and you don't really get much of it. You get a couple of green candles and then a bearish hammer. So this is actually pretty nice steady selling pressure in here. So not a great one to be buying right away. You'd want to see a uh, pop off the bottom and then a little bit of a compression and then continuation. Well, you don't get that here. You sink right back down. And this is the end of the day. By the way, when you're looking at these charts, if you see two lines that are fairly close together like this, that is the start of the day. And then you get into your normal hourly sessions right in there. So this is the beginning of the day back here. Just so that you know when I'm pointing things out on the chart, that's the beginning of the day. This is the rest of the day. There's the beginning of the new day. So that's a little bit on how to interpret the 1OP indicator. 80% of the time, you just want to follow what the indicator is doing. So you get a bullish cross, you buy. You get a bearish cross, you sell. You get a bullish cross, you buy. You get a bearish cross, you sell. 80% of the time, if you didn't put any thought into it at all, you would do great using that indicator. However, 20% of the time, there are divergences. And these divergences are extremely powerful. And I'm going to be pointing those out. When we get these divergences, it means that a very, very strong trend is intact and that that trend is going to continue. So let's go back to the beginning and then I'll scroll back about five days or so and we'll take a look at the price action that we've seen recently. So let me go back and take a look at this is price action today. I'm going to go back a week. As I had mentioned on the daily chart prior to a week ago, we had really terrible market action. I mean, there was nothing going on. It was flatlining. I don't care what indicator you're using. You're not going to do much when the market volume is extremely light into a holiday and when the trading ranges are extremely compressed. Now that we've got the holiday behind us, we've got 
politicians returning. We've got an FOMC meeting coming up next week. We're going to get the volume back. And when we get the volume back, we'll get more normal types of trading setups. So let's go back and take a look at the indicator and let's see what the candles are telling us and let's keep in mind context. So we'll go back to September 9th and take a look. Here we've got a little bit of a dip here. This is the close of the day. That's the first half hour of trading. Typically, in the first half hour of trading, I don't do a lot. I'm really evaluating the market. It's fairly rare for me to take a position right out of the gate. The only exception to that would be a gap reversal like this. There I'm taking a position. You get a gap up, long red candle closing on its low. Long red candle closing on its low. Now we're filling in this gap. Yes, this I will short, especially if I've got a bearish 1OP signal. So in any event, you need to be very passive in the first 20, 30 minutes of trading. Let the market happen. Let the price action unfold. Get a feel for what the market is telling you that it's going to be doing. So you can see we've got a bullish cross right in here. And now when I mention technical confirmation, you can see on a five minute chart, if you visually drew a downward sloping trend line, you would be getting long in there on that buy signal right there. Well, the next day opens and we've got a long green candle closing on its high, a long green candle closing on its high, and we're still on this buy signal from the prior day. Cool. Looks good. Very, very nice. Okay. This is a great trade and it's consistent with what the 1OP indicator is telling us. Remember, when the 1OP indicator is rising, we expect the market to rise. When the 1OP indicator is falling, we expect the market to fall. When it doesn't do that, we have the potential for a divergence, and that is a sign in and of itself. Again, these divergences only happen about 20% of the time. Now, typically, the bigger the peak and the deeper the trough, the better quality signal will have. So in this particular case, if you were just trading futures, then you would be long. I probably would not have bought until maybe in here, and I would have used the half of this long green candle as my stop. And you can see how it continues to grind higher. Now we've got a bearish cross. Where did that bearish cross happen? Did it happen here? Did it happen here? Did it happen here? No, it happened right here before the high was in. As I mentioned, this indicator is predictive. It tells you when you need to tread cautiously. Does it mean you short right away? Absolutely not. We need technical confirmation. So let's take a look at what the candles are telling us right here. And that'll give you a sense for how to use technical analysis for your S&P 500 trading in addition to this 1OP indicator. So get these two nice long green candles here. Everything looks go-go. Uh, red candle in here, but we're still holding all of these gains. So mm, not too bad. You'd like to see a nice long green candle here, but no. Tiny bodied candle. Another red candle in here. Okay, this tells me that there's not a tremendous amount of strength in here. Oh, that's a nice long green candle. We pause a little doji here. Another green candle. So everything up until here looks pretty good, but we had a little bit of a pause in there, but it looks okay. Now, all of a sudden, we get this bearish 1OP cross right here. I'm on high alert. Okay, well, what's the market going to do? We get this new high of the day right here. And then you see this long red candle. This is a bearish engulfing candle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that mean that I short right here? No. Still need to have some technical confirmation. One candle is not enough. So we wait and we see what happens. Okay, now we're trying to challenge that high again. Ah, here we go. Another tail above body. A wick, as it's called. That tells me that there's some resistance here. Now we have a double top. Okay, now that's getting pretty interesting here with this bearish 1OP cross. We also have an upward sloping trend line that comes into play like this. That's breached. We've got a horizontal support level right here. You can see one, two, three, 
four touches, and a breakdown. This is where you would start to get short on this 1OP indicator. We come right in here. Aha, now we have a trough. We sold off, and we've got a nice little bullish cross right in here. Does that mean that I would want to buy here? Probably not because we've got three long red candles closing on their low. That is a sign of weakness. That means that this trend is pretty strong. And we have our downward sloping trend line that comes into play just about like that. So no, I would not want to be buying in here. You can see a couple of small bodied candles. Yes, it can get through the opening from this long red candle but it really can't get any further into this part of the move. So you're going to wait and see what happens. Oh, long red candle. That looks pretty bearish right in here. Bullish green engulfing candle. Mm, interesting red engulfing candle. Now, this type of price pattern in here tells me that there's going to be a lot of chop because you got long green and red candles mixed in here. Got some tiny bodied candles. So again, context, super, super important. How does this move right in here play into what's been happening through the course of the day? Well, we've seen a nice run up. We've seen a double top high. We've seen pretty heavy pullback from it. This is the opening from the day. So now we're finding some support right on the opening price from today. And the market's just kind of trying to feel its way around. So would I come in and take that bullish buy signal right in there. No, there's just too much noise and too much choppiness going around. And if anything, I would probably favor the short side. So let things kind of settle out in here. Now you can see tail under body, tail under body, green candles, red candles. These are tiny. Try and test that low again. Nothing going in here. Now, the one thing I will say about trading S&P futures is that when you have a defined support level like this, actually from the prior day one two three four touches now we come in here one two three four five six touches this is where buyers are starting to line up in here and i know that because what does a buyer typically do well you're always taught when you trade futures that you want to buy when you have an opportunity to make twice as much as you can lose well if i'm buying in here i can keep my stop very very tight so i have limited downside but I have a very nice upside potential because if we get a bounce and a rally, I can have much bigger gains than losses. Well, trading programs know this mentality. They know what traders are doing. So I'll just say that the more touches you have on a defined support level, the more likely, in my opinion, we are to take out that low and to at very least try to flush out those buyers. So. We kind of muddle along in here, nothing going on, mix of red and green candles. You don't trade futures in that type of environment. I mean, there's nothing here for us to trade yet. But if we break through this horizontal support right here and we have a bearish 1OP cross, yeah, that gets me pretty excited. That would be a good shorting opportunity. There's your cross. Wait for that support to be breached. And when you get this red candle right in here this is where i'd be buying because sell stop triggered sell stop sell stop sell stop these are all your buyers that are lined up in here and now their stops are going to be hit because remember keep your downside very limited have nice upside well that's their limited downside trading programs know that and they will try to flush those traders out well you can see how once it went it went big. So now you've got this bearish cross. Everything's fine in here. You've got a really nice trade on from here to here. That's a long bullish candle right there. That is almost a bullish engulfing candle right there. That to me would be a key bar. Would it be enough on a 1OP bullish cross to get me long? No, not really. Not after this type of selling. Look at how heavy that selling pressure has been. This is some heavy selling that's taken place so far during the course of the day. Now, when you get a move like that, do I think that in an 
instant the market's going to reverse and go higher? No. Buyers are going to be very tenuous. They're going to be very cautious. When you get a big move like this, it's a bottoming process that you go through before you get any kind of liftoff. So this does tell me that, yes, I think the lows for the day are in. That was a very nice candle. I've got a bullish cross in here. So how would I trade it? Would I go out and trade S&P futures? No, but if I saw this and I were running my searches and I had stocks that were grind, grind, grinding higher during a market sell-off like this, sure, those are stocks that I would be buying in here knowing that the low for the day is probably in. But trade the futures? No, too choppy. And so in those instances, those stocks will keep moving higher as the market flatlines. If the market happens to take another leg lower, those stocks are probably going to pause, but they're not going to reverse hard. That gives me an opportunity to scratch the trade, maybe even make a little money on it. At very worst, I'm going to lose a tiny amount on these stocks with heavy volume breakouts and relative strength. So that's how we prefer to day trade. But I want to focus just on trading this indicator and on trading S&P futures. So you get a nice little bullish cross in here and you can see that yes from that low the market does gradually meander higher and finish higher than that point but very very choppy and this is not unexpected for us because we've seen some real chop in here and now when we start seeing candles like this I look at these candles right in here and I go yeah the market really is undecided which way it's going to go so Best for me not to trade S&P futures. So let's go to the next day and take a look at what we have working. So we come into the day and we get a nice gap higher. So we get this gap up. Ah, look at that. We're right on the highs from the prior day. Actually, not even the highs, but a resistance level. Long red candle, long red candle, long red candle. Open on the high, almost close on the low. Open on the high, almost close on the low. Open on the high, almost close on the low. Very little overlap in these bodies. And long candles, we call that stacking. When you get stacked candles like this in one direction, doesn't matter if it's S&P or a stock, you know that that is a very, very strong trend. Sellers right here are in control. This is also what we call a gap reversal. You've got your gap up and the market isn't even open five minutes. And you start to see this type of heavy selling. Then you know you're going lower. You're at very least going to fill in this gap right here. That's at minimum what's going to happen. And looky here. Right here, we got our bearish 1OP cross. Okie dokie. Fantastic. So we come all the way down here and now we start finding support at the prior day's low. Okay, long tails above body, tiny bodied candles, but long wicks. So the market is trying to resolve this. How should you be trading this? Because we got a bullish 1OP cross right here. This is beautiful. Context, context, context. These long red candles stacked. Tell me, be super, super careful. Sellers are in control. We are not going to come all the way down on big red candles like this and go zoom right back up. Not going to happen. Context. It's going to be a bottoming process. While that bottoming process is taking place, we break down and we take out this low. One, two, three, four, five touches. Remember what I told you about touches like this on a horizontal support level? The programs know that there are buyers here. Buyers, buyers, buyers. They know that if they can drive the price down below that price, that they're going to trigger sell stops. So when you see a bar like that, you can be pretty sure when you get follow through, now you know that if it's just to trigger sell stops, here's the pattern that you would see. It would be 
and it wouldn't come off of heavy selling like this either. It would just be a doink, break through that support level, and then you would see the next candle at least gets up to the halfway point of the red candle, and then you get a green candle through the top. Sometimes you'll just get a big bullish engulfing candle because they've been successful in flushing out these buyers in here. And now you're going to attract some short sellers. So everybody gets out of their longs because the sell stops are triggered. And you're going to get some bearish speculators in here going, aha, yes, I'm going to short this because this would be a great place to get short. And what you'll get then is a bullish engulfing candle or you'll get a bullish hammer. Very important that you know those two candlestick patterns. And then the market will go right back into its range. And this will just have been a head fake to trigger those sell stops and to get some people short. Same thing happens on the upside. I won't have any examples of that because the market's been fairly soft the last week. But it also happens on the upside. If you've ever wondered how you get this beautiful, gorgeous upside breakout, you get long because this is it, man. This, is, this thing is going. And then instantly you get a reversal off of that high and you're left holding the bag going, I can't win here. That was a beautiful breakout and the market reversed instantly as soon as I got in. Well, that's because these programs are in play. So if you get one of these long red candles through a support level like that, and then you get follow through, you just have to make sure that you're staying near that closing price. You get follow through, then you should see some continuation in that move. So in here, we get a bullish cross. I would mentioned to you, you would not take that because you do not have technical confirmation. We haven't been able to get through the opening of that red candle. We haven't been able to get through the halfway point of this long red candle. I would need at very least that to happen. Didn't happen. So you would not take that buy right in here. Would I short in here? It's a pretty tough short to take too because you're on the low of the day and the market has been super, super strong for the last 15 months. So I don't think that's a particularly good entry either. I would guess that it's going to be a sell-off and probably a bounce up and back into the range, just a head fake. But in this particular case, yes, that short worked. I also do not like fading the 1OP indicator. So when it gives me a bullish cross like this, I'm more interested in seeing if that was a head fake and trying to catch that bottom as it goes back into the range than I am in trying to catch a short. So these candles keep you on the sideline. Do not take that buy just because you know that the selling pressure has been heavy. You do not have technical confirmation. Again, no reason to take a long position here. You're just kind of waiting to see what happens. And now that you see that candle, you know you'll probably get some follow through. But I would not be shorting this. So now we get this nice bullish cross right in here. And you can see how everything starts to climb in here. So we are on a buy signal in here. And you can start to draw visually your downward sloping trend lines. I like to draw them as shallow as possible. Steep trend lines tend to be violated very easily and they are not always valid. But if you have a shallower trend line that you can draw, those are preferable. So we come down here, we've got one, two, three touches. Oh, this is nice. Does this get me in? No. This does not get me into the trade. Does this get me into the trade? Well, it's nice because you've got a candle that's closing on its high and you have that opening price higher than that closing price and a nice long green candle. Now you've got some continuation in here, probably in the middle of this candle somewhere. I'm saying, yeah, this thing is going to go. Now I've got a pretty decent breakout. But even if you didn't buy in the middle of the candle and you start to see Hey, we didn't even get down to the middle of it here on this tail right here. Yeah, that's a pretty good support level. Okay, we're able to hold the gains. Ah, now we're back up to that high right in there. Yeah, you could buy right in there and make a little bit of money on that trade. But you barely even get going. And this is what I want to mention also is that we're pretty late in the 1OP bullish cycle. All right. What the heck does that mean? That means if you look at how much time has elapsed from the time we got the first bullish cross until we would actually get a buy signal somewhere in here, from here to here, 
this thing's kind of run its course already. And now we're already starting to get a bearish signal in there. I don't like joining these moves that late in the later stages of the bullish 1OP cycle. I like to get short here. You can see we just crossed way up here. And that's got a lot of room to go down. So we're going to wait and see what happens in here. I know that we have to be cautious. I also know that the first part of the day has been super bearish. This is some heavy duty selling. Yes, we have found some support here. Mixed candles in here. So yes, there's some support in here. But now I'm starting to watch to see what happens in here. So I've got mixed green and red candles, not able to get through this resistance level right here. I would be looking for a shorting opportunity, but I'm going to need to be able to get at least, I would say, halfway through this red candle in here to have any interest in shorting. So we've got some horizontal support. Let's click forward, and I'm going to try and just click forward now. And that's a pretty decent breakdown right in there. And we've got our bearish signal right in here. So let's see what happens on this. Get a little bit of follow through. And for me, when I'm trading the S&P futures, entry is everything. I am expecting this move to happen right away. The longer I sit in a trade without that type of price movement. So if I'm shorting right in here on this technical breakdown, I'm using the open of that red candle as my stop, and I want to see some progress on the downside. If we just start moving sideways here and I start getting some green candles and we take out the open of that red bar, I'm out. I'm done. I'll wait for a better entry point. I'm not going to sit around and wait. Every minute that I wait, every minute that ticks by, my probability of success gets closer to a 50-50 win ratio. And I'm not in this for a 50% win ratio. I want 75% win ratio. And my winners need to be much bigger than my losers, which they are. Aha. So now we're starting to get a nice little drift lower. And that's a good little breakdown. And we've got this 1OP indicator gradually, just gradually drifting lower. That's good. Down with 1OP, down with the market. Both in agreement. Sweet. Ah. This is nice. We're starting to rack up some pretty good gains in here. Now we've got the 1OP indicator coming down. It hasn't crossed yet. So we're going to continue to go forward here. Now we're starting to see some pretty heavy duty selling pressure. And looky here. One, two, three, four, five, six touches. And we're right on that level. These guys are going to get shaken out, possibly. And we're making a new low of the day. Got a nice little tail under body here. 1OP indicator not close to crossing. It's still distancing itself from the slower line. So let's see what keeps going here. Ah, nice position to hang on to. Now you can start to draw some trend lines here that you could use for your stop. I like using the opening of these red candles, and I don't like to see too much of them retrace. We're on a nice, big, steady sell signal in here. So we're going to continue to let this baby run until we see some candles that tell us to get out of the position. So this is nice. Got a long red candle closing on its low. Now we have a doji, that may, being a close that's right on the open. I don't mind that because you can see that all of these losses here are preserved by that candle. If this were a head fake, you would see buyers come in and whoosh, you'd see most of that candle engulfed, at least half of it. They weren't able to do that. The selling pressure was so heavy that it couldn't even bounce. And then the next candle, you're getting follow through on. Love that. Oh, this is looking really good. And I believe that might be the close of the day right there. So it was. Market closes on its low. Beautiful. Look at that 1OP indicator telling you, do not get long. You are on the right side of this trade. Keep riding it. Okay, so the next day, we come in and we get this nice big gap up. Okay, but the gains are already vaporizing. And we know 
this is some heavy, heavy selling pressure that we've seen during the course of the day. Lots of stacked candles right in here. So I would not be looking for a gap reversal in here. Oof. Now I'm probably starting to short a little bit because I still got my 1OP indicators on a sell signal still. I've got two long red candles. You can see both of them with wicks above. And there's your close, there's your open. These are stacked, they're not overlapping. So this is a strong trend so far. Now, you know, <laughs> you got three of these in a row, right out of the opening gate. This is gonna be some selling and it's gonna be follow through selling from the prior day. And if you think about buyers, Think about what they went the, through the prior day. You had a massive gap reversal the prior day. So if you're a buyer, you're an asset manager, you're a trader institution, you're thinking, I want to get long this market. And you see a sell-off during the course of the prior day, and we take out the low from the prior day, and we close on the low the, from the prior day. I'm not going to be too anxious to go in and scoop stocks because I'm going to feel that with this amount of selling pressure, I'm going to have plenty of opportunities to buy whatever I want. So I'm going to be fairly patient. I'm going to let the market open up. I'm going to see how things shape up. And then if I want to be buying, I will do so. But I'm going to be fairly passive. And now you can see we get a bullish 1OP cross in here. Get a little bit of a bullish hammer in here. A green engulfing candle which is pretty nice. We've got a tail above the body in here. Almost able to get through that red bar. Uh, interesting, certainly not enough to act on. I need a lot more than that. Uh, this is problematic. In fact, if I'm short in here, I'm not shaken out by that, and I'm feeling pretty good when I see this long green candle almost engulfed by that red candle right there even though I know I got to be careful because I got this bullish 1OP cross in here. But I also know that this indicator is early. Wham! Boy, am I glad I didn't take that. And sometimes you'll get these deep troughs and a little cross in here, and it'll cross back down and continue to sink. That's why you need technical confirmation. So we know that we've got some selling pressure in here. Now I'm thinking this low from the previous day is going to be tested. That's a good red candle. Now we're getting some follow through. Now you're starting to see tiny bodied candles with long wicks. And that tells you that we're getting close to support while well, we're getting close to the prior day's low. So yeah, we are getting close to support. Continue to go forward. Oh, nice decent green candle. We've got that bullish 1OP cross. Now here's a possible divergence setting up. And I'm going to mention this because these divergences are extremely powerful and they are a sign of strong trends. This is a powerful move. This is a powerful move. If you take these candles for the first 40 minutes of the day, that is some heavy duty selling. At very least, in my mind, I'm thinking context. What's happened? Heavy selling the previous day. Start this day off with heavy selling. This is going to be a bottoming process. I do not need to jump on a bullish 1OP cross because I'm going to have tests and retests and retests until finally we start to get a decent move higher. Buyers are cautious. They know that there's heavy selling pressure. There is no need for them to rush in and buy. So they are going to wait for confirmation that there is support, at least a double bottom low or something of that nature. So this to me looks like we're starting to get a bearish divergence. And so what does that mean? That means that the 1OP indicator will be heading higher, 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 higher while the market is going lower, lower, lower. And I'm going to show you a bearish divergence that happened the previous day. And I didn't point it out to you, but I should have. You get your bullish cross in here. Let's line that up right in here. So 
There's our bullish cross. We know that there is a possible divergence looming. How? Why? Because this is strong. These are stacked red candles closing on their low. This is a powerful, powerful move. So we know we should be watching for a bearish divergence. So we get this bullish cross right in here. And that bullish cross lasts all the way, all the way, all the way. Now I'd mentioned to you, I don't like buying this late in the cycle. This is the bullish cycle right in here, all the way from here to right about here, which is almost the entire bullish cycle. What did 1OP do? It moved higher. What did the market do? It moved lower. That is a bearish divergence. That tells you that this trend strength right in here is super, super strong. And when I get these divergences, it also means that the next bearish cross is going to be gold. That's why this is so powerful. And so we get this little lift off in here and then tiny little bodied candles. That's a problem. That tells me that the trend strength is not very strong. And then a compression right up here. And now we've got this bearish cross right in here after what for all intents and purposes was a bearish divergence. So I know this bearish cross is going to be good. And sure enough, whether you use this compression right in here and then the breakdown and you short up in here, you could have come down here to the closing of that long green candle. That would be your entry point. Regardless of which one you chose, that was a bearish divergence. 1OP indicator higher, market down. So this is looking like another bearish divergence here. We've got the cross right in here, and it's been up, 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 market down, down, down. So let's see what happens here. Okay, we start getting some mixed candles. So right in here, let's talk about these candles. Okay, nice green candle. All right, we've got this candle actually engulfs that candle from a range standpoint. The body is inside of that green candle. And now we've got another long green candle. We've got a red candle inside of that candle. When you see this type of pattern, this is not a strong trend right in here. That is a very weak trend because you got green, red, green, red overlapping like mad. Remember the difference between this long, green, long red candles stacked and this is what you need to be able to identify context. So yes, we've got our bullish cross. Yes, this is kind of nice, but this is a very weak lift off of that low. So I am not going to trade that. And now we're going to continue to watch. Good thing I don't take that trade right there because look at that. And it comes down and takes out the low. I had also mentioned to you, you got buyers, buyer, 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 buyers lined up here. So programs know that they can flush these guys out of their positions. Wham, now you know we're going lower. That is, you do not get long red candles like that when buyers are in control. You just do not see it because there would be bid here, 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 bid for size all the way. If buyers were making a stand saying, that's a double bottom, high or low, I am buying everything under the sun that I can get my greedy little hands on, you wouldn't get a red candle like this because the sellers would come in and they would start hitting those bids, realizing that the bids are replenishing and they can't drive the market down and then you would get your next leg higher. That would be buyers in control. But buyers weren't in control. Any bids that were layered out there were just wiped, swiped clean, hit them all, take them all out. Then you get a long red candle like that. 
and anybody that was buying in here and had their bids layered in there is now thinking, oh, geez, we better get out of those. And they may be selling as well. So now we get a bullish hammer off the low. We're through the halfway point of this long red candle. If I were short futures and if I had shorted futures right here, this would be a problem for me. I'd be pretty nervous right in here because we're almost to the halfway point of that long red candle. So I'd be a little bit nervous in here. I would also not be shorting on a long red candle like that. I may short if you get your doji here and then I get another red candle here that gets pretty close to this low. That I would short. But we're also on a bullish signal here. So I just wouldn't short that because you've got such a good chance that the market's going to fly higher because you've had a 14-month bull market rally. Almost every dip has been gobbled up. So long red candle like that, yes, it's nice. Yeah, we took out the low. But until I see follow through right in here with a red candle, I'm not going to be buying that. I'm going to assume that these guys are just hunting for those sell stops. They've triggered them. Get your bullish hammer, long green candle. So I'm still not buying, that's for sure. You've got your downward sloping trend line here, but this looks pretty decent in here. So I'm going to continue to scroll forward. And now we see that this was kind of a just a little head fake, and now we're starting to see some more selling pressure. And now we've got this inverted hammer, this bearish hammer in here. So things are starting to look like maybe this move was more than just taking out stops. Maybe we are going to get below that point. You'll also notice that 1OP has not been able to get above zero. Not too unusual yet. So we're going to just continue to monitor. Here we go. We're coming down to the low. Do I want to short right here? We know this is very, very strong selling in here. We know that that's a sign that sellers are in control. We're right back down on the low again. It looks like we're going to continue to head lower. You got lots of tails above body. These are all signs that the market wants to head lower. We've got the 1OP indicator just barely poking into positive territory here. So it's getting close to the end of its cycle. And now we get a little bit of a bearish cross in here. The 1OP indicator has not really been able to get much above zero. Now we're getting into low quality territory. Explain. Green, red, green, red, green, red, big drop. So all of this is erased. So this is just a bunch of noise, movement, back and forth. Get nice greens here, nice reds here. Now we get intermixed green and red. If you took a look at all of these candles right in here, they're pretty directionless. Okay, we're all over the board. And if you're trading futures, these are pretty big moves. Here's are five point clips. Dangerous to be in this type of environment. We do know that there's some selling pressure out there. We've got the 1OP indicator starting to crest right in here. So what do I do? Am I going to short right now? Heck no. I'm going to draw an upward sloping trend line like that. And I'm going to let the market, I would hope the market continues to go up and then gives me some signs that it's ready to roll over. So let's see what happens in here. Okay, we're starting to go back down, but still seeing kind of a mix of candles. All right, now I've got additional information. Context. Now I can start to see. This is kind of a, bottoming process in here. There's nothing for me. More red candles, more green candles, more red, more green, all intermixed, but a gigantic trading range with chop back and forth. I don't trade this type of market. In fact, I call this a meat grinder because every time the market looks like it's going down, you get short here and then you get stopped out there. Oh, here we go. Now we're lifting off. No, it pulls back. So I don't trade when it's like this, I'm looking for nice moves that I can get into and latch onto. But if I'm trading and I'm watching this type of price action, what I do know is that there's some pretty firm support in here. If I've got a stock that is go, go running higher, yeah, in here I'm going to start trying to trade that type of stock, but I'm not going to trade the S&P futures. I've got a little bit of a bearish cross, but right now I can see that this 1OP indicator 
it's barely above zero. It's barely below zero. It's really just kind of flatlining. There's not much going on with it. It doesn't do that often. And you can also see right in here that it was barely able to poke back above zero. Now, context, again, every dip that we've had in the market so far this year has been bought. We've got the Federal Reserve printing money. In fact, central banks around the world have been printing money. You've got zero percent interest rates. Bond yields don't keep pace with inflation, so they're generating negative real returns. That's forcing people into the market, forcing institutions to be in the market. Stocks are still the best investment alternative. That's the central theme that's been playing out. So every single dip has been bought, and it has been bought aggressively. But not right now. You can see that you've got this big sell-off. Okay, we got a double bottom high or low. This should result in a really nice buying opportunity. In weeks past, you would see long green candle, long green candle, long green candle. Okay, now I'm going to wait for the next little retracement and I'll get long because that's a nice bottom and I know that that would be the low for the day. That's not what we saw here at all. We started to get going and then wham, right back down again. So now the market, you would expect a nice, okay, this is a bottoming process. We should see long green candle, long green candle. No, we're not seeing that. Long green candle, red candle, intermixed. This is the market not able to get off the deck. It's like whack-a-mole. Every time it runs, wham, nail it. Runs up, wham, nail it. Runs up, wham, nail it. When the market can't get off the deck, then you know that sellers are keeping a lid on it. They are looking to sell every little rally off of that low. So that's a little bit of a cautionary sign. Uh-oh, here we go. Long red candle, long red candle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lots of buyers layered up in here. Probably going to get some follow through. Got our bearish cross right here. We can get short, but we've got to know also that this 1OP indicator is pretty flat. So now we're just trading off of this weakness here, this weakness here, and the fact that the market can't get off the deck. I don't really have the 1OP indicator telling me that, yes, this is going to be a good short. And now we've got a little bit of follow through. Green candle, red candle. Eh, pretty low quality breakdown in here so far. You can see green and red candles intermixed. So I wouldn't be real interested. I would probably bail on that and take a little bit of money. Maybe I'm scratching the trade, but I don't want to be in this. I want to see red candle, red candle, take out that low with a vengeance and not hokey poke around. This would tell me that those are probably just some sell stops that were triggered and the market may bounce. Now that's a pretty decent red candle in there. And now we're seeing some follow through to this breakdown right here. Got another nice one in there. Now we're clearly through that low and we know that these were not just simply sell stops that were triggered. Again, 1OP not really helping us in this case because it's flatlining and there's nothing going on. I would not be trading futures there. Long green candles, red candle. Look at that. These erase each other, but we're getting 1OP to actually dive into negative territory in here. So it's at least not zero any longer. And there could be a nice bullish cross pending, which we've got a bullish cross. Now we've got a long green candle, long green candle, long green candle. That tells me that this is probably the low. We've got a double bottom low. We've got a downward sloping trend line that I can draw right through here. We're through that downward sloping trend line. We've been able to get through all of this nonsense. Yes, I think this would probably be pretty decent entry point. I'd be watching horizontal resistance there and there to see if the market can get through that. So yes, it looks like we've got a decent opportunity in here. We've got a bullish 1LP cross, but I know we're also getting close to the end of the day. So we'll see how the rest of the day plays out. And I believe that's the end of the day right there. Yes, that's the close of the day. So it does get through this horizontal resistance. Now, the start of a new day. Another gap higher and another red candle to start the day off. 
hmm, where have I seen that pattern before? Oh, yeah. That's how the pre previous day started off. I see another red candle, another red candle. I'm going to be getting pretty excited to short the market. Hmm. Inverted hammer, doji. I'm going to guess the next one's going to be red. Of course it is. We're going to fill this gap in at very least. So yes, that would be a shorting opportunity. You can see here, 1OP had a bearish cross, but it uh, didn't quite get above zero. I would like to have it well above zero on these crosses, but if I'm just trading technicals, this is enough to tell me that a gap reversal is probably underway. Oh, hello. That is some weak price action. Long red candles stacked. Very little overlap. Doji in there. That's fine. Continuation. Yep, we're going down. And now you can see it's consistent with the 1OP indicator going down. And you would definitely be short in there. Now you're starting to get some mixed green and red candles. This tells you that you're starting to find some support. Does this mean that I buy right in here? Because I've got a tiny little bullish cross right in here on the 1OP indicator. Heck no, not after that type of selling. At very least, you'd want to get through this horizontal was support. Now it's resistance. You at least want to get through that. In fact, I'd like to get up to the closing price from the previous day right in here before I'm buying, especially on that type of selling and in here when i see that type of selling i'm thinking bullish 1op cross probably gonna be a bearish divergence why because we can expect to see bearish divergences when we have a very strong trend this is a strong trend so let's see what happens in here Yep, there you start taking out this low right in here. If I'm short in here, I'm not getting shaken out by this either, by the way. So the 1OP indicator, yes, you've got a bullish cross, but remember, it has just crossed and it can cross back down and go much, much deeper. Let's see if I've got any instances of that happening. I don't think I do on this screen, but trust me, you can get these little temporary crosses and then a big drop. So that's why we need technical confirmation. I would have stayed with the short there. And now we start seeing some compression in here. And look at the 1OP indicator. It's still just hovering in negative territory. Tails under body, tiny bodied candles. We cannot get through the halfway point of this long red candle. If I were short, that's what I would use for my stop. But you can see we can't get through that. Can't even get through that. So let's keep going. Now we're through it. Got to stop out right in there. Let's see what happens. I still would not be buying in here. Okay, that's a pretty decent little bounce right in there. But tiny bodied candles, relative to this context, relative to this, this is not that strong tiny tiny little bodied candles that is a sign that the trend is weak and tails above and below body so long wicks in there tiny bodied candles i see this i'm thinking draw your trend line wait for that bearish 1op cross and short it when you get that technical breakdown but you can see what's happening right now Market up, 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 up. What's the 1OP indicator doing? It's still below zero. It can't get off the deck. That in and of itself is a sign that there is danger, that there is selling pressure. This, that's a nice long red candle. Do you short that? Nope. Why not? Well, I talked to you about horizontal support and resistance lines. Let me talk about trend lines. Computer programs generate these trend lines. These proprietary trading firms know what your mentality is. Your mentality is this is a strong move and I've got a nice upward sloping trend line in here. Oh, hallelujah, there's my long red candle. I'm going to be getting short on that because 
the market has breached that upward sloping trend line, this is a good entry point for my short. There's another thing that's happening. Anybody that's buying in here and buying in here and buying in here, they're going to start using a trend line or a trailing stop to lock in their profits. So as long as everything is kosher and moving higher, then they're going to stick with the trade. So they've got these upward sloping trend lines drawn as well. And when that's breached, they exit their long position here. So you get them shaken out. You probably get some short sellers in here as well. And then blam, bullish engulfing candle. Okay, that's pretty nice. But look at 1OP. It's still in negative territory. It has not been able to move higher. Let's continue to go. Okay, well, this is looking pretty good. Bullish engulfing candle. Now you got another candle up in here. We're back almost to the prior day's close, which is right here. So, yeah, things are shaping up pretty good. These are two nice candles finally, but we still got all these little bodied candles. We still got this long red candle in here. So, still best to wait. Now you got your upward sloping trend line coming in like this. Now we're below that upward sloping trend line. Let's take a look at what we've got forming here. We had this nice long green candle that was stacked right in here. This red candle just took out that opening price right there. That's not particularly good. Remember, I like to use the halfway point of these long green candles as a support level. We're also through that long green candle right in here. What's 1OP doing? Hasn't even budged. It's still weak, still staying below zero. So it's telling us that there is a lot of selling pressure in the market. So if you look at 1OP versus any other indicator, these other indicators that are based on uh, solely on price movement, doesn't matter what they are, whether it's stochastics or MACD or whatever you use, they're going to be going back and forth and up and down with this type of price action, but not this indicator. So now we're starting to break down a little bit here and we're starting to see some red candles. We know that we've got a very strong move that happened early in the day. We know that we've seen selling pressure the last few days. So we've got to be thinking, hey, I want to get short here. The open of this bar right here, now it has just failed. And we're starting to see that selling pressure accelerate. 1OP is staying low, and it looks like it's poised to move lower. This would be a good entry point for a short. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Now, one, two, three, you've got buyers down in here who are going to take some pain. Now you're starting to see this 1OP indicator gain some distance and some momentum. And you know right in here when it starts to separate like that and you got that red line, the fast line moving lower quickly, long red candle closing on its low, doji. All of these losses are preserved. Buyers could not come in and erase any of that because the selling pressure was so heavy. Sell, 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 sell. Now you get another, another nice red candle. This long red candle right here, right on this low here. Let's see if that was just to shake out the stops. Lo and behold, it was. So in here, this candle, I get back above the halfway point on this red candle. I'm going to stop out there. I don't need to see a long candle like that. So I'm going to be out. I'll still have made money on the trade. Actually, would have made a lot of money on the trade. Did make a lot of money on the trade. Okay, so this is just a little bounce in here. Nothing too problematic. But we do have a bullish 1OP cross in here. Got this long red candle in here. So maybe we're going to start to form support here. We we're able to get above the open of that red candle. Now I would be looking for a double bottom, higher low that I can maybe consider buying. Let's see what happens. Well, that looks pretty constructive. 
so far, but you can see there's an example where 1LP get a bullish cross and it drops back below. But now you're getting another bullish cross in here, kind of mixed candles, so a bottoming process, green and red candles mixed. So looking okay, nothing too great yet though, nothing to get me that excited. And yeah, just can't get anything going here. Now we're starting to see three red candles in a row. We've got our upward sloping trend line here that's breached to the downside, some tails above body. 1OP still really not able to get off the deck. Looks like it's going to cross back down again here. Oh boy, there you go. Now you know that upward sloping trend line there that was breached. That could be a good entry point. You're taking out those buyers bullish hammer gotta wait here is where i want to see i don't mind the doji here i would prefer a doji without a big tail under body right here personally because that tells me that there was some buying pressure but the next candle i want to see red and then i'd like to see another red one if i don't get this follow through right away i'm going to be very tentative with my long position especially since we're getting close to the closing bell and i tend not to take very large positions when we're this close to the close now we've got some follow through so we're okay on that short right there got a doji need a red candle here didn't get it through the halfway point right here now i'm, I'm going to be taking my profits on that short position even though the market went down i was okay on that and now you're starting to get kind of a mixed bag of movement. You've got green, you got red, you got green, you got red. So we're starting to chop around and form some support here. And I would not be trading this because now we're in the last hour of trading. Starting to see a little bit more selling pressure. And this is a bearish trend day. There's your nice downward sloping trend line preserved most of the day. So that's how that day shaped up and there wasn't a whole lot that you could do on the close. And that's how we finished the day. You can see there was a nice bullish 1OP cross right in here, right in there. And you started to get a lot of tails under body. You started to have really compressed tiny little bodies. This would be another reason to say, hey, yes, the market looked really weak today, but I'm not going to push it into the close. I'm just going to exit. That's exactly what I did. We got a nice little rally into the closing bell. Let's go back into that daily chart, and I'm going to close with a few notes. So we know that these dips have typically been bought, but what you have not seen if you look back at a chart is constant red candles. These are a little bit of a problem, and they tell me that the market is going to be under some selling pressure. Why? Because a red candle forms when the open is higher than the close. So we open on the high, close on the low. Open on the high, close on the low. That pattern has been intact, and sellers have been very, very active late in the day. When you see late day selling, that is not good. That is a bearish sign and we could see some follow through selling in here at least to the 50 day moving average this upward sloping trend line is something that we need to watch carefully if that's violated we probably go down to the 100 day moving average i can overlay that 100 day moving average and there you can see where it comes into play the 50 day moving average comes into play much higher right there we're not too far from it so I'm seeing some pretty persistent selling where the market has had a tendency to rally. You get one, two days of selling and then zoom off to the races. Mm, not this time. Yes, it's been kind of tenuous on the way down because we've been gapping higher each day, but we have seen late day selling. So I would be super cautious with long positions. Also know that September is historically a very weak month. And there are a lot of other things going on that I mentioned in my daily market comments. Context, context, context. So if you had been paying attention and you saw that gap reversal right there, you got to be thinking gap reversal. 
gap reversal, gap reversal. If we get a gap higher tomorrow, you've got to be thinking gap reversal again and waiting before you come in and buy. In fact, you may even be thinking, let me find a few good shorts overnight. So that's one thing that I wanted to talk about was just context of the overall market on a daily basis and then context of the market on a five minute basis. What has happened earlier today? Am I trapped inside of the first hour range? If the answer to that is yes, then I need to be super cautious. Let me hit the home button and we'll go all the way back and see if we can find a flat day where we're just kind of muddling around. If I see this unfolding, here we are, the first hour of trading. I've got my high of the day. I've got my low of the day. Until we're through that high or through that low, I'm doing zero. I'm not doing anything. It's context, mixed candles, back and forth. No bueno. Ah, we're through the high of the day. Okay, there's a decent little move for me. I also know, context, that the closes have been very close to the open and were extended pretty far from that opening price. Draw my upward sloping trend line. Compression, high of the day, breakdown through that compression, 1OP, bearish. Okie dokie. We got a trade. Sometimes when you get price action like this, now mind you, if you're trading stock and you know that you're trapped in a range like this, good. I don't have to worry about the rug getting pulled out from underneath me because the market is going nowhere and I can focus on the stock. So that's one thing that I would keep in mind. But the other thing that I would keep in mind is that you've got your upward sloping trend line. The market's likely to reverse. You got your bearish cross right in there. Now you've got a shorting opportunity late in the day. And the market probably closed pretty close to the open on this particular day. So that's also context. Where is the market in relation to how it opened? What's the price action been like today? If you've got a gap up through the prior day's high and you have a gap and go formation with continuation, Okay, that's also very valuable information. It tells you that the trend is super, super strong. So make sure you're watching the context. Make sure you're watching for those stack candles. This is not a strong rally right in here. Tiny bodied candles. Yes, they are consecutive. Tails above body though. This is a nice little move higher that you can stick with. Draw your trend line though. And as soon as it starts getting tired, you know right in here when you get this bearish 1OP cross, and this is, by the way, this is normally what 1OP looks like on a day like this. I just randomly went back 20 days and picked a day. You get your drop here. You get your bullish cross in here. Okay. Still don't have confirmation on it, though. Now you get a little bearish cross in here. Don't really have technical confirmation on a breakdown. Now I get another bullish cross. Draw my downward sloping trend line. Okay. I got confirmation in here now i'm long now i know i got to be careful then i get my sell off right there there are days when you get this sideways type of price action like this where if i'm trading futures i don't even trade sometimes until the afternoon if we're just stuck in a range and chopping back and forth there's no trade for me there so be super super patient when there's nothing there there's nothing there don't force it Wait for those higher probability setups like this. Like this is a really nice one. You got that really nice big peak in the 1OP indicator and you've got that nice horizontal compression right here. Multiple attempts at a new high of the day. Can't get through. Nice long red candle through it. Follow through. Okay, you can start getting short in here. That's the type of thing that you need to be watching for. I hope that this has helped you. The one thing that I've touched on a few times is that there's not a lot of edge to trading the S&P 500 futures. Do I trade futures? You bet I do. I'm very good at it. I've been doing it for a long, long time. And it took me a long time to get good at it, to identify these types of price patterns in the context that we're dealing with, and to develop the 1OP indicator. I put an awful lot of time and energy into that. So 
Yes, I can trade the S&P 500 successfully. Most people can't. And even though I can trade it successfully, there's still a much bigger edge in trading the underlying stock. If you're trading the underlying stock, that's where you want to be. And I can put up a chart and I know this is one that I was watching throughout the course of the day. Bullish flag, lots of strength, moving higher. Put up that five minute chart and you can see when the market's down, down, down like this and like this, this stock is strong relative to the market. So late in the day, when I get my bullish 1OP cross and I see that this stock is still higher than it was the previous day, it's probably going to bounce. This is a choppy stock. I can find better examples. In fact, let me just go into one of my searches here and I'm going to hit relative strength 30 and I could take a look at any one of these stocks in here. Take a look at AFRM. I'm going to be looking for a stock that's been strong all day. I want to see something that's near its high of the day. That's not too bad. There you got market down, down, down. So if I were going to be trading, instead of buying the S&P futures, when I've got support like this, and let's say that I get in right here, this would be a good example. S&P down, support, down, support, double bottom, micro, right in here. I'm going to be buying in here. This looks great. Stock has been moving higher with the market moving lower. I buy right in here. Uh-oh. Market takes another drop. If I'm trading futures and I bought right in here, here I am losing money. I'm going to lose a lot of money on the futures and I probably have to stop out of the trade. In this particular stock though, if I'm buying in here, Let's say I buy in here. I'm down a little bit, but the stock jumps right back. As soon as the market stops going by, look how well it held support. So I'm not flushed out of the position and I'm able to ride the move higher. This is not the best example. It's just one that I happen to pick out of all the different stocks. If I'm flipping charts, I can identify those really strong stocks like that. And if I get the market wrong and I'm a little bit early, I'm not going to have my head handed to me. So the combination of knowing what the market's going to do, using the 1OP indicator to get into positions, finding stocks with relative strength, that's how all the puzzle pieces fit together. So even if you're not a subscriber, even if you're not using the 1OP indicator, I hope that the lessons on the different candlestick patterns that I'm looking for and the concept of context will help you with your S&P futures trading. Trade well. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.